Now I'm going to give you a quick lesson on how to apply the law of exponents in the properties of exponents and radicals. Now to be able to understand the lesson on properties of exponents and radicals, you need to know your law of exponents really well and also you need to know how to simplify simple radical expressions and the operations on fractions because you will see fractions as an exponent in, in most of our expressions today. So your knowledge on adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions is going to be important in understanding the lesson today. And of course, your multiplication table. Now for the exponent rules, we already know what the product rule is, the power rule, the power of the product, and the power of the quotient. And these are some of the laws of exponents that you're going to apply in simplifying radical expressions. Now we're going to highlight the rational exponents of the law of exponents, wherein if we have a raised to m over n, we can uh, transform the rational exponents into a radical by changing it into nth root of a to the m. So this is one of the laws of exponents that we're going to be uh, using in uh, most of the problems that we're going to simplify today. So when we are working with some rational exponents, sometimes it could be simple, sometimes it could be a little bit complicated. So to start with, let's have these examples of rational exponents because you will see that most of the exponents that you're looking at right now are in fraction form because rational in algebra is simply the exponential form of a given real number or algebraic expressions. So if we have x raised to 3 over 5 and if we need to change it into a radical expression using the law of exponent, we can change it into the fifth root of x cubed. Now in my case, I all, what helped me remember the rational exponent rule is the denominator of my rational exponent will always be the root of my radical. So every time I see the denominator as a rational exponent, I already know that that will be the number that will be outside my radical and the numerator will be the number inside my radical. So if I'm going to apply that principle in x raised to 1 half, I know that the second pa or the denominator of 2 will be outside the root or the radical and x will be raised to 1. So x raised to 1 half is now written as the second root of x raised to the first power. However, most of us are not familiar or not used to seeing um, second root of x to the first power because in algebra, we can simplify this form into the square root of x. So it's safe to say that every time you're seeing a rational exponent of 1 half, you can simply change it automatically into the square root of that particular number. So x raised to 1 half is square root of x. So when you see 81 raised to 1 half, you know that it's simply square root of 81. So that is a common rational exponent that most of you will encounter in some algebra problems. So it's wise to know that a x raised to 1 half is the shorthand or the other version of the square root of x. Now if I have x raised to 1 over 3, my denominator is 3, so I'm going to have a third root of x to the first power or simply third root of x. So if I have x raised to 1 over 5, 1 over 5, it will be the fifth root of x, or x raised to 1 over 10, it will be the tenth root of x. So th these are some of the basic rational exponents that you will encounter in algebra. Now problem number four is different from the first three problems because now we're using a real number as opposed to a variable. Now if we are going to raise 16 to 1 over 2, you will notice that it's going to be a little bit complex to comprehend or understand what 16 raised to 1 half is. That's why if we convert this into a radical form, it will simply be the square root of 16. So from 16 raised to 1 half, it was changed to square root of 16, which is more understandable because we are more familiar to seeing square root of 16 as to 16 raised to 1 half. So this is the same principle that I want you to understand or to use when you're working with rational exponents. Some rational expressions are easier to understand or easier to solve when you change it or convert it into another form of an algebraic expression, just like what we did on problem number four. So these are some of the basic application of the rational exponent. 
Now, let's take a look at some examples that uses the law of exponents and the rational exponent rule. You are seeing x raised to 2 over 3 multiplied by x raised to 1 half. And in this particular example, this is going to be a little bit complicated or a little bit more challenging than the first four problems that I have given you because now we're going to apply two or more laws of exponents to simplify our expression. Now we know that the product rule can be applied in this expression, which is a to the m times a to the n is equal to a raised to m plus n. And since we have the same variable with different exponents, we can simplify this using the product rule of the law of exponents. So we'll end up with x raised to 2 over 3 plus 1 half. And just like what I've mentioned, you need to know how to add and subtract fractions to be able to simplify some problems in rational exponents. So since our exponents are fractions that are being added together, we need to use our formula in adding fractions. So if I have 2 over 3 plus 1 half, I can simply add them up and it will equal to x raised to 7 over 6 using the formula of addition of fraction. So now that we have x raised to 7 over 6, we can still simplify this by changing it into its radical form. Although x raised to 7 over 6 is the simplest form of our problem, we can further simplify or convert this to give us another version of our rational exponent. So our final answer could be the 6th root of x to the 7th or x raised to 7th over 6. So these are some of the application of the laws of exponents that, um, or multiple laws of exponents in one problem. Now let's go ahead and answer problem number 2. Now for problem number 2, we have a power rule um, using the rational exponent. So we have x raised to the negative 1 over 5th or 1 over 5 raised to 2 thirds. And if we're going to use the power rule to simplify this expression, we are going to multiply our powers, giving us x raised to negative 1 over 5 times 2 over 3. Now, this one is a, an easier operation because we know that multiplication is a lot easier to work with than addition of fraction because multiplication is simply multiplying the numerator and the denominator to find its simplest form. So if I have negative 1 over 5th or negative 1 over 5, times 2 over 3, it will simply be x raised to negative 2 all over 15. So now that we are seeing a negative exponent, we can still simplify this, this using the rule or the law of exponent by taking the reciprocal of our expression so that our exponent will turn into a positive exponent. So from x raised to negative 2 over 15, we can change it into a positive exponent by taking the reciprocal of our expression. So now we have 1 all over x raised to 2 over 15th, which is another version of x raised to the negative 2 over 15th. And to further simplify our expression, we can convert our rational exponent into a radical. So we could have another version of our answer equal to 1 all over the 15th root of x squared. So this is problem number two, using the power rule, the negative exponent rule, and the rational exponent rule. Now let's go ahead and answer problem number three. Now for problem number three, we are seeing a fraction with an exponent raised to another exponent. So when this problem, um, you, or when you encounter this type of problem, we're going to first distribute the exponent to our numerator and our denominator because we can apply the power of a quotient rule to simplify the fraction. So since we can distribute negative one half to four raised to the fourth power and three raised to the second power, our new fraction will look something like this. So the numerator will be, or will have four times negative one half and the denominator will have two times negative one half. And simplifying the fraction or the rational exponent will end up with 4 raised to negative 2 and 3 raised to negative 1 because half of 4 is 2 and half of 2 is 1. And since we are dividing by or multiplying by a negative, our answer or product will turn into a negative. And just like what we did on problem number 2, we used the negative exponent to turn our exponent into a positive exponent. So we're, what we're going to do is since we have a negative exponent on top, and a negative exponent at the bottom, we can reciprocate or switch our real numbers so that our exponent will turn into a positive exponent. 
So now we'll have 3 raised to the first power and 4 raised to the second power, which is equal to 3 over 16. And this is problem number 3. Now, let's take a look on how we can further use the radical or the properties of radicals and exponents in simplifying some radical expressions. So in our four examples over here, we have the square root of x squared up until the third root of x cubed. Now, let's simplify the square root of x squared using the law of exponents or the rational exponent rule. So we know that the square root is simply an exponent of one half, so we will turn square root of x squared into x squared raised to one half. And using the power, power rule of the law of exponents, we can multiply two and one half, which will give us one as an exponent because half of two is equal to one. So square root of x squared is simply x to the first power using the rational exponent rule of the laws of exponent. So for number two, we have square root of x to the fourth, converting it into a rational exponent will give us x raised to 4 times 1 half. And half of 4 is simply 2, so square root of x to the 4th is equal to x squared. And if we have square root of x cubed, which is a little bit different from the first two example, because if we multiply 3 and 1 half, we'll end up with an improper fraction. And if we have an improper fraction, we can convert this into a mixed fraction, giving us x raised to 1 and 1 half. So we'll end up with x raised to 1 plus 1 half. And using the product rule of our exponent, we can separate x to the 1 and or x to the 1 plus 1 half into x raised to 1 times x raised to 1 half. So our final answer for problem number three will be x square root of x because of the properties of the exponent. So notice that this particular um, rule will only apply whenever your exponent is an odd number exponent because you will always end up with the remainder when you simplify your rational exponent. So for problem number four, we have third root of x cubed and if we simplify this into a rational exponent, you will see that we'll have x raised to 3 times 1 third. And 3 times 1 third is equal to 1, so number 4 is simply x to the first power, or x. So this is another application of the rational expressions or the rational exponents in simplifying some rational expressions. Now let's take a look at this expressions or multiple strings of variables and um, coefficients inside a square root. Whenever you encounter this type of problem, what you can do is to separate the coefficient and the variables into two radical form because we are multiplying or we have the factors of our variables inside the square root, we can separate it into square root of 8 times square root of x squared to the y to the 10th times z to the 5th power. And by doing so, we'll be able to organize our work and focus on square root of 8 and the square root of the expression. Now square root of 8 is simple to simplify because square root of 8 has a factor that has a perfect square which is 4 and 2. So square root of 8 as we know is going to equal to 2 square root of 2 and the square root of x to the 6th power, y to the 10th power and z to the 5th power is simply going to be square root or x to the 6th, y to the 10th, z to the 5th, raised to 1 half. So our coefficient, we can simplify it into 2 square root of 2, and our expressions with rational exponents, we can distribute 1 half to each term, giving us 2 square root of 2 times x to the 6th over 2, y to the 10th over 2, and 5 all over 2. Now for x and y, simplifying the exponent will be simple because 2 can go to 6 and 10 evenly. However, 2 cannot go to, the, 2 cannot go to 5 evenly because it will turn into a mixed fraction. So when that happens, we know that 5 over 2, when we simplify it, will be 2 and 1 half. So our expression will be 2 squared of 2 times x cubed, y to the 5th, and z raised to 2 and 1 half. 
and we know that using the properties of exponents, we can separate z raised to 2 plus 1 half into z squared times z to the 1 half. So we'll end up with this expression, which we can further simplify by combining our square root of 2 and square root of z. So our final answer for problem number 5 will be 2x cubed y to the 5th and z squared times the square root of 2 to the z or 2z. So this is how we use the law of exponents and uh, the properties of radicals and exponents in simplifying some rational expressions.